Greg McDermott. Coach, we'll have you start with a statement and then we will take questions. Well, I think there's about eight minutes left in the game. Uh, when I coach early after the timeout, he said, you know, this is this is a hell of a basketball game. You know, both teams are are really competing. It's very physical. Uh, there was execution uh, on both ends and there was big defensive stops and hustle plays on both ends. And, you know, let's face it, we've we've lost a couple games, uh, you know, at Kansas and against Marquette where we've really struggled from the foul line. And today uh, we got the benefit of the, them missing a couple free throws late uh, that allowed us to send it to overtime. So you hope over the course of the season, those things uh, even themselves out and uh, it did today. And then our, you know, our guys, after giving up that first basket in overtime, I thought we're really focused defensively and, and we made some good plays on the offensive end to create some separation. All right, if you've got a question, use the raised hand feature. We'll start with Matt DeMarinas from White and Blue Review. Hey, Mac, I'm just wondering uh, if you had any conversations with your players uh, throughout the game as you know, missed shots were starting to pile up a little bit and it was clear that it was going to be a grinder of a game, whether you conveyed to them that they were going to have to be the tougher team in order to win this one. Yeah, you know, we don't we don't talk much about missed shots, Matt. Uh, we, we talk about the right shots. <clears throat> and if we take the right shots and we miss them, that's just part of the game. It's a make and miss game. And we actually had a couple possessions late, uh, a great kick out by Denzel to Mitch, uh, an extra pass, uh, one more pass from Mitch to Marcus for a wide open three. Um, you know, those those are shots that, frankly, we want. We're, we're trying to seek those in the, in the flow of our offense. So if we can get those, uh, you know, I, I don't get too caught up in makes and misses. We're going to play the way we play. And uh, when they spread out, we got it into Christian Bishop. He made some great plays to get us back in the game and I thought gave us a huge lift the second half. Next, we're going to Matt Foster, KETV. <laughs> Mac, I know it's still early in league play, but how important are these games when it comes to winning a conference championship at the end of the season? Well, I mean, you, you have to get fortunate some, I think, to win a conference championship. And part of that goes with your health. Uh, <clears throat> part of it goes with winning a couple uh, that you're not supposed to win. And, you know, UConn had us there late until they missed the free throws. Um, so, you know, you, you got to get lucky once in a while. We, we got lucky at the end of the game, but we continue to fight to put ourselves in a position to at least have an opportunity there. Uh, with a couple of plays we made. And then, you know, Damian Jefferson executed, the, made a great play in the out-of-bounds play at the end to get it to overtime. Um, but, you know, we lost one at home. You got to go get some on the road. And uh, this is a difficult road trip to be gone for, you know, five days like we've been and to come out of here with two two wins against two very good teams rather than the cap for our guys. Next, we'll go to John Niatale with the Omaha World Herald. Greg, I know you've, you've complimented your guys' grit and toughness over the last, of course, the last year. But when you have a game like this where, like you said, you had good shots, especially right there in the final minute that didn't go down, but yet they were able to still find a way to, to make it happen. Like, how important was it for this group in particular to, to battle, find a way, and, and see the results go the way that they wanted? Yeah, I mean, a very physical game. And, uh, you know, we, we ended up even uh, out-rebounding them, even on the offensive glass, which was huge for us. But the reality of it is, you know, we're not winning a lot of games when Marcus and Denzel combined two or 13 from the three-point line. You know, those they are two of our better shooters, and they had some decent looks, and they didn't go in. And you combine that with we didn't make free throws, and you still found a way to win. And, um, you know, our execution late in the game and our execution in overtime was really, really good. And like I said, we got a little help from UConn there late in the game. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm proud of our guys, and they stuck to it, and they kept believing it. You know, Damian Jefferson's attitude in those timeouts and in the huddles is incredible. Like he, his belief in, in what we're doing and in his teammates uh, is really at an re incredibly high level right now. And, uh, you know, people feed off that. And uh, it was good to see, uh, see that from DJ once again. He had a heck of a road trip. Got time for three more questions for Coach. We'll start with uh, Dave Borgen. Yeah, Greg, I just wanted to ask you, uh, just through the first couple of weeks of Big East play, what you know, what you've seen from afar and what you've seen in, during the actual games, how competitive the conference is going to be this year and uh, how tough it's going to be throughout the season. Well, I mean, there's not going to be any easy games. You you better uh, you better get excited for any win that you can get uh, because it's uh, it's a grinded out league. It was that before. Now you add a, a program with the history and tradition of, of UConn and, and, you know, Coach Hurley does a an unbelievable job preparing his team and get, getting them to compete at a high level. Uh, and, you know, it's obvious they take on his personality and that's a sign of a really well coached team. So 
uh, throughout the league. Uh, there's nothing going to be easy. And, uh, you know, people are going to have to figure out a way to get through these disruptions. We had one early, obviously, UConn's just coming out of one. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's probably going to continue to happen as, as the season goes on. And you, you just got to appreciate every game you can possibly play. All right, we'll go back to John Niantala. What'd you guys do differently down the stretch against book, uh, book night? Well, I, I mean, we flooded him a little bit more in his penetration. Uh, you know, I, I thought there were times Denzel maybe closed out a little short on him and, and gave him a three and we encouraged him to get up into him a little more and, and make him put it on the floor. But if you're going to do that, then the, the defense behind him has to be there. And I thought for a good portion of the game, it was not. And I thought in, in overtime and late in the game in particular, we did a much better job of, of meeting him and he, and he saw bodies when he got in the paint. Uh, I don't know who it was on the breakaway layup uh, late that Mitch had an unbelievable vertical wall, both hands up, forced him to miss the shot. I mean, just a just a huge, huge play, uh, something that we practice all the time. But you hope that when the lights come on, your guys can execute it. And, and, and Mitch executed that incredibly well. And our final question will go back to Matt Foster, KTV. Mac, you mentioned uh, Damien's energy in the huddle. In games like these, especially in a year where there's no fans, how important is that senior leadership to really keep the guys energized even when those shots aren't falling? Yeah, it's really critical because they've, they've been there and they understand, uh, you know, there's, there's ebbs and flows to every game. And there's games where the ball bounces around the rim for their team and goes in and, and bounces around the rim for our team and bounces out. And uh, so you have to control what you can control. And, and, and Damien has embraced that uh, in, in an awesome way uh, that, you know, we're, we're, we'll take care of what we can take care of and we'll let the chips fall where we may, may but we're going to leave it all out there. We're not leaving anything uh, on this bench. We're getting out there. We're going to get into it. And, you know, he's encouraging the guys on the bench to be uh, enthusiastic and, and provide a lot of energy. And I thought they did that today. So, uh, you know, I've, I'm blessed with some veteran leadership. You know, all those guys in the starting lineup have been around uh, and, and they get it. They've been in tough situations before and the moment never gets too big for them. And, uh, you know, hopefully that'll pay dividends like it did today down the road. All right. Thank you, Coach. We'll be uh, have Christian Bishop on very soon. All right, we're joined now by junior forward Christian Bishop. We will start with questions, starting with Matt DeMarinas, White and Blue Review 2. Hey, Christian, I was just wondering uh, how much of the second half, of your second half performance can kind of be attributed to just being in foul trouble in the first half, or did you do something in terms of, you know, juicing up your intensity against UConn's, like, long and physical front line? Uh, I mean, I feel like I... I was just trying to stay consistent the entire game. Uh, I know in the first half I got those two quick calls, but those are just playing hard. So if I just keep playing hard, you got, if I'm gonna do the same thing in the first half I did in the second, I still got a foul to give. So <laughs> I just keep it same, you know? All right, we'll go to Johnny Atala. He's just what were the conversations like down the stretch, Christian? You guys weren't making the shots that you normally hit and it was a grinder. Um, what were you telling each other? How'd you keep encouraging each other? Well, we knew uh, our offense going to come from somebody because we got tons of guys who can score the ball. So uh, just digging deep on defense, grabbing rebounds, and just being solid. We just got to stay consistent and uh, doing what we got to do and what we practice every day. And by doing that, we ended up coming with a W. All right, next we'll go to Matt Foster. Christian, what did you guys learn as a team from those Kansas and Marquette losses that really helped you um, in today's fight? Yeah, I mean, really, like, boxing out in defense, you know, whenever you got big guys, like, we're usually always the undersized small team. And so uh, just boxing out and playing harder or being the harder defending team uh, helps us win and get better. All right, next we'll go to Matt DeMarinas. Uh, Christian, I was just wondering what you saw out there from Denzel. It seemed like the you guys kind of stuck him on book night when book night got he did up pretty good and let him kind of guard in the rest of the rest of the game. What did you see in terms of how he was able to slow him down? Um, we just had to bring more guys to help. You know, he he's a good player. He's going to make shots. He has big shots. He had a lot of big shots today. But um, just being in the gaps and uh, just making it difficult for him because we knew not the entire team would score like he can. So by making him beat us by himself, that's what he got to do. And 
uh, helped us win the night. Three more questions for Christian. We'll start with John Nantel. Christian, what was your view of uh, Damian Jefferson's bucket to tie it? Like, uh, did you know what he was going to do? Or uh, how, how, what did you see? I mean, I didn't even know what was about to happen. I just knew that he's really good at playing off of two feet and he has a nice floater to him. So uh, that was just amazing for him. That's what went in. All right, Matt Foster. Staying on the topic of uh, Damian, Max said he was, he was really talkative in the huddle down the stretch. How important is having a guy like that in – a leadership role in games like this? It means everything, you know, um, DJ is gonna be able to come in and we're gonna get the same thing from him every day, whether it's, it's like, he's gonna be vocal every single day and tell us what we gotta do. Even if he's not making shots, he knows that um, he's gonna contribute in some type of way. And since he's a leadership, we can all look to him and uh, figure out what we gotta do. And it makes us play harder. All right, and our final question will go to uh, Matt DeMarinas. Yeah, I just have one last one on how the how that that final lob play down the stretch. It seemed like UConn was doing a pretty good job of disrupting your timing on that. Yeah, uh, but you still had a tough finish there. Like, how did you get up and get that thing off the glass in traffic? With uh, we, practice, we practice lobs every single day in practice, so I mean, you said second nature at that point, you know. All right, thank you, Christian. That'll end the Creighton media session. We will have UConn shortly.